You are listening to Veggie Doctor Radio, and this is episode number 189. Welcome to Veggie Doctor Radio. I am your host, Dr. Yami, board certified pediatrician, certified lifestyle medicine physician, certified health and wellness coach, author, speaker, mother, wife, and human being. I passionately believe in the power of diet, habits, and mindset in sparking and sustaining well being and joy in our lives. This podcast combines expert interviews and thoughtful monologues to explore plant-based nutrition, lifestyle medicine, parenting, mindset, and other exciting and fun topics. I hope that these episodes inspire you, uplift you, and equip you with the knowledge and tools to live your best life. Are you ready to get started? Let's do it. Welcome back, veggie lovers. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. I hope that your new year is off to a great start. Well, I did not have a podcast episode last week, and it was one of those things that I was dreading was eventually going to happen. But right before our travel, we took the week after Christmas off to visit Tucson, Arizona. I got sick, which was not fun, and I was really tired. I tested negative for COVID twice, and I suspect that what I had was RSV. I did not want to waste any of the rapid RSV swabs at my office because they are a precious commodity, but I'm pretty sure that's what I had because about seven days prior to my symptom starting, one of my beautiful little patients projected vast amounts of mucus onto my face as I was doing their nasopharyngeal swab, which I deserved because nobody likes nasopharyngeal swabs, but I also wasn't wearing my face shield. I was wearing my mask and my glasses, but hey, it was it was a lot at once. So I learned my lesson. Unfortunately, I passed the virus on to the rest of my family one by one and we were all mucus factories, which is the hallmark of the respiratory syncytial virus is lots of mucus. Fortunately for older children and adults, we just get a bad cold, but unfortunately for the littles under one, they can get what's called bronchiolitis. So we do have to be very careful and not spread it to those little babies because they can end up in the hospital with lots of inflammation in their lungs. It's been a rough season lots of viruses. It's not just COVID out there, y'all. It's RSV, the common cold, which has hospitalized a few of my patients, and uh, lots of other stuff going around, hand, foot, and mouth over here. So sending a virtual hug to all of the parents that are experiencing sleepless nights and trying to get through this season. But this episode is going to be really helpful because we're going to be talking about spices, which is going to be your biggest bang for your buck when it comes to antioxidants. Before I get into that, something super exciting happened. So every year, Veg News Magazine has what they call the Veggie Awards. And this year, Veggie Doctor Radio is on the list of podcasts that you can vote for in the Veggie Awards. So that's vegnews.com, V-E-G news.com. If you go to forward slash Veggie Awards 2022 with dashes in between each of the words, so Veggie Dash Awards Dash 2022, then you can vote for my podcast. And if you are a loyal listener, oh my gosh, I would appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for being a listener and for making this possible. It's a very long list of things to vote for and it's so fun and you'll get FOMO because it goes through all kinds of things like ice cream and donuts and best veggie bacon and all this stuff. And then you'll realize there's lots of products you still haven't tried and need to try. And of course, like the best vegan city and the best vegan restaurant and all of this stuff. My podcast is on page six of the survey. It is category 56. 
So you have to go through 55 categories before you get to my podcast. You don't have to vote in every single one of the categories. There's some categories that I had no clue. I hadn't tried any of the things in the category or been to any of the restaurants. So you don't have to vote for all the categories, but I so would appreciate it. Thank you so much for being a loyal listener and for taking time to vote for Veggie Doctor Radio. I appreciate you. Okay, so happy new year. We are talking about spices today. I have been every month highlighting a different plant category and herbs and spices is on the top of the list when it comes to antioxidants, but we decided to split it into spices on one episode and herbs on another episode, just because there's some slight differences. And also that way you get some more information and there's a lot of information. So I'm not gonna be able to cover everything, but hopefully this will inspire you to include more spices into your cooking. I'm going to be quoting Dr. Michael Greger from his book, How Not to Die, one of my favorite books, very comprehensive. And on page 50 of that book, he writes, the food category that averages the most antioxidants is herbs and spices. At the end of that little text box, he writes, plant-based meals tend to be rich in antioxidants on their own, but taking a moment to spice up your life may make your meal even healthier. Now, I've said this before and I'm gonna say this again at the beginning of this episode because there are some of us that weren't raised with a lot of spices. Now, I'm Panamanian and in the Panamanian culture, our food tends to be on the blander side as far as the use of spices. And you know, you may think of some other cultures where you just think like the spices are so rich, like Indian food or Thai food, Mexican food, Mediterranean food, like it's just so flavorful, so many different spices. So maybe you were raised in a culture or in your household where you didn't utilize spices as much and so you're not familiar with them and you're not accustomed to them. So you have not had the opportunity to learn to like them. Just like any other plant food, when we talk to kids, when we talk to ourselves, remember that any flavor that we want to acquire, that we want to like, we have to learn to like through repeated exposure, through consistent and repeated exposure. So there is hope Don't categorize yourself as that person who I don't like, quote, spicy food. And by spicy, we're not saying hot, just like food that has lots of different kinds of spices in it. You can learn to like it. Be patient with yourself. Try different things. Experiment. Have fun. Because spices are incredibly health promoting. And it's a great way for a small amount of something to get a big benefit when it comes to antioxidants. So I wanted to start there. Listen to what I have to say first. And if you're one of those people that just isn't used to spices, integrate them slowly. I remember when I was in college, and like I said, I grew up not eating a lot of different spices. And when I went to college, I met people from all different parts of the world. It was really fun. And I remember saying to one of my friends at the time, Leon, if you're listening, I don't like curry. And he was so frustrated because I think I said it multiple times. And he's like, there is no one curry because curry is a combination of spices. So you can make your own curry and it can be a different combination than somebody else's curry. Or you may have noticed there's yellow curry, there's green curry, there's red curry. So I had like categorized this all this explosion, this diversity into this one category and be like, I just don't like it. Of course, that is no longer true. And now I love all kinds of different curries and curry flavor combinations and foods from all over the world, but I had to learn to like it. I experienced that with Ethiopian food as well. At first, I did not like the injera, which is that sourdough pancake that they use to eat the food. And now I love it. In fact, while we were in Tucson, we got to eat Ethiopian food at a restaurant called Cafe Desta. Desta is my son's name. It means happiness in Amharic. And we loved going there and having some delicious Ethiopian food. And 
as usual, we were fighting over the last bites, as always happens in my family. We're big eaters, so it was delicious. All right, let's get on with it. Spices. First of all, what are spices? Very interesting. A spice is a part of a plant, so it can be the fruit, it can be the bark, the seed, or the root that is used for flavoring or coloring foods. Spices can also be used medicinally. They can be used in cosmetics. They can be used in perfumes. In fact, I am wearing a vanilla orchid scent right now, a nat more natural perfume. It smells amazing. And spices can be found fresh, but they can also be dried in their whole forms. They can also be dried and ground. Probably the majority of us are used to seeing dried and ground spices, the kind that you get in a little shaker bottle, and then you can shake and sprinkle onto things. Whole dried spices, so you may think of like, you know, pepper when you grind it, but there's peppercorn, so that's the whole form of the pepper. Whole dried spices have the longest shelf life. There are at least 80 different spices throughout the world. There might be more than that. I mean, I suspect there's more than that. I tried to find some resources to estimate how many spices there are, and that's one of the ones I found, but I feel like that number is kind of low. There's probably more. Now, there is a difference between a spice and an herb. Like I said, I'm going to do a separate category on herbs, but the difference is that a spice comes from any part of the plant besides the leaves, flowers, or stems. And an herb is always leaves, flowers, or stems. So herb is a little bit more restricted in what an herb can be. A spice can be pretty much any plant ground up, okay? Over the last few decades, research into the health benefits of spices has increased significantly. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. The most popular spice in the world is cumin. You've likely experienced it, especially if you love Mexican food. Cloves is the most antioxidant rich common spice. And amla is the most antioxidant rich uncommon spice. And I got those stats from Dr. Greger's book, How Not to Die. What are the common spices that we consume in the United States? Vanilla beans, black pepper, white pepper, cinnamon, mustard, oregano, ginger, cloves, and nutmeg. And by far what I want to emphasize to you today is when it comes to the nutrients found in spices, antioxidants is probably going to be the most powerful that I want you to remember. Spices are a rich and concentrated form of antioxidants. And you know, when we use spices, we don't use this huge amount. We use pinches, we use a quarter teaspoon, a half a teaspoon. If you're like me, some of them, a teaspoon or two, <laughs> you know, some of the spices I love. So you're not, you don't have this huge amount, but they do have other nutrients in them. Different spices have different nutrients, but some of the ones you might find are phosphorus, fiber, potassium, manganese, iron, magnesium, B vitamins, calcium, iron, even protein. But remember, it's gonna be a small, tiny amount because you're not eating huge quantities of spices. Okay, so before I talk about the health benefits of spices or list them out, I want to read a few passages. So first from Dr. Michael Greger's book, How Not to Die. Highly recommend this book if you haven't already, especially if you love to learn about nutrition. So we're going to talk about the antioxidant effects of spices, but particularly turmeric. So since this is quoted from Dr. Michael Greger's book, quote, since 1987, the National Cancer Institute has tested more than a thousand different compounds for chemo preventive activity. Only a few dozen have made it to clinical trials, but among the most promising is curcumin, the bright yellow pigment in turmeric. Chemo preventive agents can be classified into different subgroups based on which state of 
which stage of cancer development they help to fight. Carcinogen blockers and antioxidants help prevent the initial triggering DNA mutation and antiproliferatives work by keeping tumors from growing and spreading. Curcumin is special in that it appears to belong to all three groups, meaning it may potentially help prevent and or arrest cancer cell growth, end quote. He also says later on a few paragraphs, quote, the anti-cancer effects of curcumin extend beyond its ability to potentially prevent DNA mutations. It also appears to help regulate program cell death, okay? So that is the power of antioxidants and how it can help our health prevent cancer, even fight cancer. And I wanted to read that for you. Now, this other book I recommend, especially if you're interested in spices and decreasing inflammation, is Body on Fire, How Inflammation Triggers Chronic Illness and the Tools We Have to Fight It. So this is by Dr. Monica Agarwal and Dr. Jyoti Rao. And I interviewed Dr. Agarwal on Veggie Doctor Radio. It's episode 135 about her experience with inflammation and how she used plant-based diet and other modalities to help improve her health. But she has a whole section on spices. It's chapter 10, Spice It Up with the Spices and Herbs of Life. She says, spices are an essential part of any diet. They are very potent in decreasing inflammation and have many medicinal properties. She goes on to say, why are spices so valued? because of their potential role in health. Spices are concentrated forms of the most potent parts of the plants they come from. Spices are full of phytonutrients. She goes on to say, when phytonutrients are involved in cell signaling, they have the potential to turn inflammatory cascades on and off. In that way, spices can be beneficial in reducing inflammation and oxidative stresses. Okay, so that is why I want to emphasize for you the antioxidant potential of spices. And you don't need that much. You just need a little bit consistently over time, integrate different spices. And the reason you want to integrate different spices is because they all have different properties. So she goes here to say, what do spices contain that can be found nowhere else? Curcumin, a vital anti-inflammatory with anti-cancer benefits, can only be found in turmeric. Thymoquinone, thymoquinone, I think that's how you pronounce it, is a potent immune booster and only exists in black cumin. Black cumin, by the way, is a different spice than cumin. I have some at my house. It has a very interesting flavor, but you have to probably find it online unless you can find it in some market. Piperine has neuroprotective effects and is unique to black pepper. Eugenol, found only in cloves, is a powerful painkiller. Rosemarinic acid is a potent antioxidant, and the only source is rosemary. Capsation is a great medication for arthritis and is only found in chili peppers. The list goes on and on. Okay, so you get the point. You, you want to eat spices. So let's talk a little bit more about specific health benefits. And there's so many. I literally could do probably a couple of hours of a podcast episode listing out all the different health benefits of different spices and the different studies they've done. So this is going to be summarized some of the, the big ones that you may have heard about and you may benefit from. So turmeric, like I said, is believed to have anti-cancer properties and can prevent DNA mutations, may help prevent some of the DNA damage specifically caused by smoking. Curcumin, the pigment in turmeric, may play a role in preventing or treating lung disease, brain disease, variety of cancers, including multiple myeloma, colon cancer, and pancreatic cancer. Another benefit that is important to understand is that using different spices 
helps decrease our consumption of salt added to foods because it makes the flavors of the foods interesting. So we don't have to use as much salt and having an excess of salt in our diet can be detrimental to our health. So whenever we use more spices and we're using less salt, that can be beneficial. Cinnamon can lower blood sugar and reduce high blood cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Ginger can help treat an upset stomach, diarrhea, and nausea. It has also been used for migraine treatment and menstrual cramps. Sage may be able to improve brain function and memory. Fenugreek may have beneficial effects on blood sugar. Garlic may decrease the risk of heart disease by reducing cholesterol levels, may also reduce blood pressure. And capsaicin, which is found in cayenne pepper, peppers can provide pain relief. So that's some of the summaries, but just like I was reading from Dr. Agarwal's book, black cumin, immune booster, turmeric, anti-inflammatory, black pepper protects brain cells, cloves can be used as a painkiller, rosemary, antioxidant, chili pain reliever. Okay. So and another thing to remember about spices, like I was talking about before, if you're used to a more bland diet and you don't like spices, and we always assume that kids only like bland foods, but we can start integrating spices into their foods from a young age. Don't be afraid to do that because that's the only way they're going to learn to like those flavors. Remember, just like Dr. Greger said in, in his book here, quote, intense colors and intense flavors can be signs of intense benefit, end quote, because those properties from those foods is what we're tasting. We're actually tasting the anti antioxidant properties from those foods by seeing all those beautiful colors and those very vibrant flavors. All right, so we know that we should eat spices. There's over 80 different spices. They all have different health properties. How much should we eat? And now for a very important message. Hey mama, if you are feeling frustrated about mealtime battles, worried that your child isn't eating enough or eating enough vegetables, afraid that your child is going to get some awful deficiency or disease because of the lack of diversity in their diet, I wrote a book that might be for you. A Parent's Guide to Intuitive Eating, How to Raise Kids Who Love to Eat Healthy is available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook through all major online booksellers. Did you know that most children are born with the innate ability to eat the appropriate amount of food to satisfy their hunger and support appropriate growth? Despite this, parents are still anxious and confused about how much and what to feed their children. In addition, many children are labeled as picky eaters or develop behaviors such as hiding and sneaking food. There's also a growing epidemic of dieting behaviors and eating disorders beginning at alarmingly young ages. In my book, you'll learn the five pillars of healthy eating, how to apply intuitive eating through all the stages of development, lifestyle habits that support healthy eating and body image, troubleshooting and problem solving for picky eaters, overeating and dieting behaviors, how to create and foster a healthy body image in your children, how exploring your own body image and relationship with food will help raise an intuitive eater, and what foods to offer your child at different stages of development. A Parent's Guide to Intuitive Eating, How to Raise Kids Who Love to Eat Healthy, available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook through all major online booksellers. Are you ready for a fresh approach to feeding your child? For more information, visit dryami.com forward slash book. And now back to the episode. Well, that's a tricky question to answer because there's no guidelines on this, but Dr. Michael Greger does have his daily dozen recommendations. And because there's so many studies on the curcumin from turmeric, he specifically does recommend integrating just a quarter teaspoon of turmeric into your diet every day along with other herbs and spices that you enjoy, just a quarter teaspoon. But he feels so strongly about the evidence for the benefits of turmeric 
that he specifically recommends adding that to your diet every day. But beyond that, just integrate whatever spices that you like to eat into your different meals and eating opportunities. I'll talk a little bit more about some ideas of how you can integrate turmeric. I personally have to work on this one myself because I have not made it one of my habits, one of my daily habits. Ways to incorporate spices into your meals. Well, we have, especially here in the United States, different habits. And one of our habits is that for breakfast, we tend to eat sweet foods. And when we think of sweet foods, we don't think of spices, but there's lots of spices that lend themselves beautifully to sweet food. So what are the different ones? Like cinnamon, said that has spice, that has benefits for our blood sugar levels, ginger, nutmeg, cloves, cardamom, anise seeds. Those are all ones that lend themselves well to our sweet food. So you can add that to your breakfast porridge. You can make some breakfast muffins that are on the sweet side and you can integrate these different spices. Say you're having A savory breakfast, an easy way to integrate turmeric is by making a tofu scramble. (laughs) That's just like, because in the tofu scramble, we're using the turmeric, that color, to color the tofu and give it that yellowish color that an egg would have. So that one's an easy one. Just put some turmeric in there, put some black pepper in there. Oh my gosh, one of my favorite is smoked paprika. Oh, so delicious onion powder, garlic powder, so easy to add to your savory breakfasts. Another thing you can do is make your own spice mix and put it in a shaker and use it on different foods throughout the day. You can even put it in your bag, your purse, whatever, and take it with you when you go out. But it's so easy. You can buy a shaker or after you've used a a shaker up, then you can fill it with your own spice mix. Like I said, smoked paprika is one of my favorites. So a spice mix that I've made is onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika. I actually throw in some nutritional yeast and just a little bit of salt. And I love that combination. But another thing that you can do is look up different combinations of spices for what cuisine you want to experience. And some of us may say, oh, we're not very good cooks. I don't know how to cook that. But remember, the only way that you can learn how to cook is by doing it, right? So experiment and have fun. And we're going to create or include some links for you to two different resources that I found that are really helpful on spice combinations. And this is really fun because I love to just make stuff up in the kitchen and create things. You don't always have to go by a recipe, but say you feel like making something that tastes Mediterranean or that has more of an Italian flavor. Okay, well this article from greatest.com has spice combinations that you can integrate from all different parts of the world. Let's say that you wanna do an Italian one. So they recommend using basil, garlic powder, onion powder, oregano, parsley. Now some of these are gonna have herbs, which we're gonna talk more in another episode, but these are just examples. Or you wanna do Mexican, coriander, cumin, chili powder, oregano, cinnamon, garlic powder. Oh my gosh, my mouth is watering. Or say you wanna do Thai, basil, cumin, cardamom, garlic garlic powder, ginger powder, turmeric, curry powder, Mediterranean, one of my favorites, bay leaves, oregano, rosemary, thyme, cardamom, ginger powder, cinnamon, cloves, coriander, and basil. So it gives you a little template, a little primer for what combination of spices you can use to create the flavor profile you're going after. Now there was another one that I really liked that I'm going to include, which is an infographic on how to recreate 36 world cuisines with just three spices, so that's even easier. Some of these other ones might be too complicated for you to start with. Grease, the flavor profile that they integrated was oregano, olive oil, lemon, Mediterranean, garlic, oregano, capers, Mexico, chili, tomato, lime, Morocco, coriander, cinnamon, cumin. So you can go through and you kind of get an idea 
of what are the highlights of the different flavors and different cuisines and then just play around with it. Or like I said, you can create your very own spice combo that you just love and you go to over and over. But it is a good idea to sometimes push yourself out of your comfort zone. Like right now, I'm probably stuck in the comfort zone and I don't play around with as many spices as I should to get that diversity of exposure not just for the antioxidants, but also for our gut health. Because remember that all of these foods have different types of fiber in them that feed different gut bacteria. So it's beneficial for us to push ourselves outside of our comfort foods to integrate other plants that we don't typically integrate when we get stuck in our little ruts. Okay, um, another thing that you may have heard of is something called golden milk. So I've tried this once, I'm gonna try it again, but here is the basic template for golden milk. Unsweetened plant milk, a teaspoon of turmeric, ginger, so you can use fresh ginger or ginger powder, cinnamon powder, black pepper, and then you can add an optional sweetener to it like a little bit of maple syrup. Now they have found that adding black pepper to turmeric actually enhances its potential and allows you to absorb more of the antioxidants from turmeric. So that is why in this golden milk, it also adds the pepper to it. So that's something that you can do, especially if you like warm drinks, you heat it up on the stove and you pour it for yourself and sip it. Maybe something that you can do in the evening. I'm gonna try it again and see if I can get used to this ritual. But I'm also going to start incorporating the quarter teaspoon of turmeric into my morning oatmeal because I have oatmeal at least six days a week in the morning that I add my blueberries to and it's I love it, it's so warm and comforting. But I'm gonna start adding turmeric to it so that I can get that one component of the daily dozen that I have not been. All right, so let's end with some fun facts about spices. I love these random things. It's just so fun to learn interesting things. All right, so fun facts. India contributes to 75% of the world's spice production. That is a lot. Turmeric has been used as a medicinal herb for, or medicinal spice, I guess, medicinal food for 4,000 years. Dried herbs and spices last one to four years depending on the type, level of processing and storage. Around 1492, pirates used to look for spice importations as spices were more valuable than gold. And pretty soon I'm gonna tell you what spice is still more valuable than gold. Red peppers contain more vitamin C than a lemon. Fenugreek may increase lactation in nursing mothers. The spice trade developed throughout the Indian subcontinent and Middle East by at least 2000 BC with cinnamon and black pepper and in East Asia with herbs and pepper. The United States entered the spice trade as it now exists in the late 1800s and is the, the largest spice importer and consumer in the world. So that's good. I mean, that's a good sign that we do eat some spices Black pepper is the world's most traded spice, and it once served as currency to pay salaries and bribes. Cinnamon sticks are actually bark. It actually, you know how they look like bark? Well, it actually is bark. All right, the world's most expensive spice, do you know what it is? Saffron. Saffron is the world's most expensive spice, and in some cases, it's more valuable than gold. Quality saffron can cost $3,000 for just two pounds. And the reason is, is because it takes 75,000 saffron flowers to make just one pound of saffron spice because they only use the stigmata, that long, long little thing that pokes out of the flower. <laughs> you know how to describe it. That's the only part uh, that they use for making saffron. And so they have to grow all these flowers and it's expensive to do that. But saffron is so delicious. Saffron rice, oh my gosh, my mouth is watering. Q 
cumin has the most salicylic acid per serving of any spice and you may know that salicylic acid is the active component of aspirin so one teaspoon of ground cumin may be about the equivalent of a baby aspirin okay I hope that this has motivated you and inspired you to spice up your life with more spices in your eating opportunities, your meals. Let me know what are your favorite spices and where are you going to try to integrate more spices? Are you one of the ones that have stuck to a really bland diet and not integrated spices or have you always been a spice adventurer? Email me, yami at dryami.com. That's spelled out, D-O-C-T-O-R-Y-A-M-I.com. Or better yet, join my newsletter. Go to dryami.com forward slash free. Pick any or all of the free downloadable PDFs and you will be added to my newsletter. So you will get a gift for hearing more from me if you like to hear from me. I appreciate you. Happy 2022. Here we go. It's another year. We're going to have fun and I'm excited for everything that this year is going to bring. Thank you so much for your attention, my veggie lovers, and I hope that you have a plantastic day. Hey, veggie lover. I hope that you loved today's episode. Will you take a second and do me a huge favor? Please subscribe to my podcast so that you never miss an episode. You're the reason I'm here and I want to share it all with you. Thank you for listening and have a plantastic day.